Um, I have a prophetic word that was given to me on 11, 16, 19. It's called the Holy Spirit said to name this come out of her. I am a God that cannot lie. I will not allow for my children to be a partaker of this world. Come out from among them and be separate, says God. I will not have you in the midst of the world. You will be a fornicator if you do not come away from it. You will be a lot like a sheep if you were separated. You cannot come to me and ask me for forgiveness and then turn around and go back to being a fornicator. You are being too comfortable with the unrighteous. I am not in the midst of sin. You can choose to be with me or be with the world. I am a God of love and a God of wrath. You should know this if you read my word. When you are in the midst of sin, I am not in the midst of you. You will be chastised if you don't repent. I am not going to tolerate sin. You will have to make a choice. Choose wisely. I am a God that has a lot of love for my children. You are not repenting. Why are you not repenting? Come away from the world. I will forgive you when you do this. I will not let you go to the world for a time and then come back to me. You will not use me. Come back to me. I love you. My love for you is not in the midst of sin. You will repent. Come out of the world before it's too late. And the scriptures he gave were 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, 31 through 32. And Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 14 and 17 through 18. Basically, um, this message is for God's children. And right now he's cleaning out the temple, so to speak. He's going through and he's trying to get his children to get it together um, before he um, he's getting ready to judge his house. Because, you know, scripture says that judgment starts at home. Well, it's coming home and he's trying to get his children to um, lock it down, quit playing, get it, get it together, get cleaned up because he's coming soon. So he's got to do this. This is necessary. He's pulling out the switch and the uh, the the bucket and the scrub, and it's time for for you know everybody to get cleaned up because daddy's coming home. So um, sheep, you know the drill. Lock it down. Quit playing. Stop. Um, Running out in the midst of the world, seeking acceptance. Um, they don't like you. They'll never like you. They'll never accept you. Because when you turn your back, they're constantly mocking and scoffing and talking about you. Um, it doesn't matter what you do to try to buy love and acceptance from the world. They don't want what you have. They don't like you. They never will. And so... Um, the only thing you do when you go, when you're, when you're trying to blend in with them, they're wolves, you're sheep and you're going to get attacked. You're going to keep getting attacked until you learn the lesson, come out from among them as God says, and be ye separate, go amongst your own kind. And I know you're getting attacked amongst the sheep. This is going to stop. And I know a lot of you are running to the world because you're, you're, you're taking pleasure in the things that are not of God. But some of you are doing it because you're getting tacked amongst the sheep. This is going to stop. It's going to stop, says God. It's going to stop. He's going to put an end to that. And the sheep are eventually going to get on one accord. We're all going to be speaking the same thing. Um, one true doctrine. And it's going to tear down. The lies of Satan. It's going to tear down the the false doctrines. It's going to tear down the false prophets. All these Baal prophets are going to be put to silence because the true prophets are going to overtake them. Their bite is going to be stronger. Their roar is going to be louder. And when they're done, the Baal prophets will not even be able to be heard. They're going to be silenced. In the end, the only thing that's going to be left remaining is the truth. And that is God. 
His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts. And I'm telling you, it goes down to the bone and the marrows. Because when somebody speaks the truth to you and you know you are in sin, that thing hurts. I'm tell it, it hurts. I tell you, it hurts. It cuts. It burns like fire in your chest. But that's how you know it's the truth. Because the lies and the false doctrine lulls you to sleep. It pacifies your flesh. It feels good. It doesn't hurt. It makes you feel good. It's just, it, it comes with uh, nostalgia, um, like you're high on drugs. That's what it feels like, false doctrine. That's what's going on in the churches. It fans you to sleep. And when you the only, when you get fanned to sleep, the only thing going to wake you up, somebody got to cut you, hit you with that switch across your legs or across your back. And when they hit you with that switch, it's going to make you wake up out there sleep, whatever you're in. You will come up out of it. I tell you that much. You will come up out of it. But he doesn't want to do this. He has to do this. The sheep, you have put him in this position. So don't cry wolf. You put yourself in this position. He gave you his word. He laid out instructions to you. And when you get saved, you, those Ten Commandments, if you don't know them, I suggest you go in Deuteronomy, get to know them. Go in Leviticus, get to know the Ten Commandments. Because when you get saved, you come into an agreement with him to keep these laws and statutes. And he says, if you keep these laws and statutes, that means you love him. If you don't keep those Ten Commandments, then you don't love him. And, tr and truly, you really don't even know what love is. This false perception of what love is that's floating around in the churches and in the earth today is a lie. That comes from Satan. Real love is what Jesus did. Real love is what Jesus endured. It's full of suffering, pain and suffering, endurance, meekness, humbleness, humility, obedience. That's what real love is. So... Go back and study the scripture so that you can correct your perception of what you've been taught. Prosperity doctrine is not love. God did not promise us wealth and prosperity. Although he can give it to us, he did not promise that to us. He says, seek the things of the kingdom first and the rest will be added unto you. And the thing is, is those things that will be added unto you. He did not say what they would be. If he choose to give you wealth, not saying that he can't because some he does give it. But if he gives it to you, you will only be able to obtain it in his kingdom through obedience to him and doing his will. If you are in his kingdom and he has allowed you to have wealth and you continue to disobey, you will lose that wealth. He did it to Israel. He gave Israel wealth, but when Israel started disobeying him, he took his wealth back. He took it from them. He let the nations come and take it. And then they went into slavery. That is what happens when you're disobeying him. You become enslaved to Satan. He take what you have. He take what he's giving you back because you're not worthy of it no more. And you're not going to use God. You can't pimp God. I know a lot of his children are trying to do that, but you can't run game on God. You can't pimp God because he knows the future. He knows what's in your heart. He listens to your thoughts. He knows everything about you, even the secret things of you that you don't know. So you cannot pimp him. You can't. He will not compromise with you. You will compromise with him. He will not come down to your level. You will come up to his level. He has laid the contract when you got saved on the table. He laid out his commandments. He gave you his rules. And you signed that agreement when you asked for the Holy Spirit. You came into agreement that you would obey him and do what he want by surrendering to him. This is how you got the Holy Spirit. Go back and read the contract. He's not in error. You are. Stop operating in disobedience. He is never wrong. We are. Because oh, disobedience blinds your mind. And the Bible tells you that Satan has blinded the minds of the, the heart, minds and hearts of the simple. And when he blinds your mind, you are in deception. 
You think you know the truth, but you don't. You're in deception. And the only way to get you out, he has to come with the word because the word is like a sword. It pierces the deception in order to shake you and rock you and bring you back to your core. And the only thing going to do that is that the word, that pain, the burn and the pain, it will shake you to your core to help you snap out of your deception. So stop running to the false prophets, letting them fan you to sleep with prosperity doctrine. That is not biblical. God does give wealth, but he did not promise you on this walk that you would be rich. And most of you don't deserve it and you don't need it. Because if you get it, you will come. The spirit of pride and arrogance will come through there. And you think you won't, you say you won't do it, but you know what? Peter said he wouldn't deny Jesus, didn't he? And yet he did it three times. God knows you better than you know yourself. So most of you do not deserve that after what you have done to God and you don't need it. We're in the last days and this stuff is it's going to be taken from you. Because you're either going to get the mark and sell out to keep it or it's going to be taken from you. And right about now, worry about the soul. What does it profit the, the what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Worry about your soul. Stop worrying about prosperity and all that stuff. We're, we're, it's, it's time to go home. Let it go. It won't profit you nothing. You can't take it with you. And for those of you that are chasing this fake dream, you're sitting there giving these people that claim to love you all your money, but yet they're the ones that's lulling you to sleep and taking you to hell. And they're the ones riding around in the limousines or sitting in the mansions while you're outdoors or you can't get your rent paid or your car note paid. See if they'll buy you a new car with that money. All I'm saying to you, stop chasing dreams. Stop worrying about vanity. These things are not good. You can't take them into the kingdom. The only thing that matters is pleasing God. And for those that are on the bride, you should be concerned about retrieving your prize, your husband. That should be your focus. Nothing other than that. If he gives you wealth, then remain humble with it. But don't set your heart on it because you won't get to enjoy it. If you have it, it's coming to an end. So take your eyes off of the things of this world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, or else the love of the Father is not in you. Come away from the children of the world. They don't like you. These are wolves. You are sheep. Go amongst your own kind and look for love. And I know, I know the devil, because of sin in the flesh, we are attracted to you, you ever hear the saying about opposites attract and a lot of times because of that, we're attracted to evil. You better fight that temptation because that's evil to indulge in that attraction itself is evil. Fight it. We are better than this. We are sheep. Let's stick with our own kind. Those of the sheep that are cutting up, God is going to stop all that. And we will be on one accord. He's going to shut all that down. We'll be on one accord. And you can find love. This is the lie that Satan tells you. You can't find love amongst the sheep. So you got to go to a wolf. No, that's a lie. You can find love amongst the sheep. And if you ask God, he will lead you to it. But we got to get it together and lock it down. And uh, come out of the world, separate yourselves. Um, there is spiritual fornication takes place when you indulge in those things. So you have to come away from that. And um, that's all I have. And I thank you for watching and you have a nice day.